Hadoop tutorial. In this session, we will start with the introduction to Hadoop. Then we'll talk about different Hadoop nodes and demons, internals of Hadoop architecture, its characteristics and different features. What is Hadoop? The technology that empowers Yahoo, Facebook, Twitter, Walmart and tons of other giants. Let's talk about Hadoop in more details. It is an open source framework that allows distributed processing of large data sets. That too on the cluster of commodity hardware. So guys, let's talk about all these terms in great details, starting with open source. It means that your source code is open. You can simply download the source code. If required, you can even modify the source code and sell it on your own name. Distributed processing. The data is processed distributedly on multiple nodes, multiple servers. Multiple machines process the data independently. Like you are having 100 node cluster, all the 100 nodes will be processing the data distributedly independently. Cluster. Cluster means multiple machines connected together. The machines are connected via the LAN. Commodity hardware. It refers to the low end hardware, which are very economic or affordable. Typically low performance hardware like 8 core processor, 16 gigs RAM. So guys, overall Hadoop is the open source framework that can process the data just on commodity hardware. It doesn't need high end hardware. Hadoop is the open source framework written in Java. Actually, Hadoop is inspired by Google's MapReduce programming model as well as its file system. Let's talk about it in the history section. So in the 2002, Duck Cutting, who is also known as father of Hadoop, he started working on Nutch. Now in 2003 and 2004, we got two paper published from Google. One is GFS, that is Google file system, and another is MapReduce. So after reading these two papers, Duck Cutting added DFS and MapReduce in his Nutch project. Then guys, in 2006, the development of Hadoop started as Lucene sub project. When Hadoop was not even in alpha in 2007, the New York Times converted 4 TB of image archives over 100 EC2 instances. Now guys, 2008 was a very big year for Hadoop. The first news was from Facebook. They launched Hive. Hive provides SQL support on Hadoop. In just two years, Hadoop became the top level projects. And biggest news, Hadoop defeated supercomputer in TerraSort. And guys, it grabbed industry attention all the big players started using Hadoop and guys then onwards the industry started the normal healthcare or retail or telecom all these industry also started using Hadoop later in 2009 guys duck cutting joined the cloud era and the momentum of Hadoop development started like anything now let's talk about Hadoop components Hadoop consists of three key components. The first is HDFS. HDFS is the storage layer of Hadoop. HDFS is world's most reliable storage layer. And guys, it is anticipated that in next two years, more than 75% of the data on the planet will be stored inside HDFS. The next component is YAN. YAN is the resource management layer of Hadoop. As Hadoop runs on a cluster, so who will manage the resources of the cluster? It is the YAN. The third component is MapReduce. MapReduce is the processing layer. MapReduce sits at the application layer, which is used for processing the data. Now, let's talk about Hadoop nodes. 
mainly guys we are having two types of nodes one is the master node and another is the slave node master who is the manager master who assign the work to the slave slaves actual worker node so master simply take the work from the user divide it and submit it to all the slaves slaves parallelly distributedly keep doing all the work let's talk about hadoop demons demon background process which support the services so guys on the master node we have a demon called resource manager and name node these are the two demons that run on the master on the slave node we have a demon called node manager and another demon that is data node so guys primarily we have these four demons resource manager and node manager run for yarn resource manager master of yarn node manager slave of yarn on the other hand name node and data node run for hdfs name node the master of hdfs data node the slave of hdfs now let's talk about basic hadoop architecture guys we already discussed hadoop works in master slave fashion master usually in the cluster we have very few master now you'll ask me why multiple masters guys for the failover for the high availability in case your master goes down your standby master will automatically take over now if i talk about the slaves there could be thousands of these slaves in the cluster so guys how exactly it works user want to submit some work user want to process the data he will simply develop the work develop the algorithm and submit the same to the master now guys master will divide this work into the sub work and distribute the same to all the slaves now you can see in the cluster all the hundred slaves are working on the same task on the same job in this manner guys how do process the data distributedly whenever user submit the work all the slaves start processing the data now let's talk about hadoop characteristics which makes hadoop a very popular framework in the industry open source distributed processing fault tolerance reliability high availability scalability economic easy to use let's talk about all these characteristics in great details open source guys the source code is open it's freely available you can simply download the source code you can use that you can redistribute that simply download it modify it and sell on your own name the license is apache 2.0 license which doesn't have any restriction distributed processing this is the most important characteristics the data is processed distributedly on the cluster rather than having just one machine we are having a cluster say 100 node cluster so all these 100 nodes process the data parallelly and independent of each other now guys if i talk about the traditional systems where we just had one machine there we had centralized processing when users submit the work that machine starts processing the data processing the data processing the data when we talk about big data data that is in the range of hundreds of petabytes the single machine is not sufficient to handle our requirements that's why guys we got a pretty new way of processing the data that is distributed processing guys here we have cluster like hundreds of machines are there in the cluster i'm just showing for the simplicity just very few machines so when user submit the work on the master master will distribute the work to all these slaves and now guys look at it all these slaves are processing the data in parallel so guys this is the distributed processing nature which makes hadoop thousands time faster than traditional systems fault tolerance fault means failure now guys there is a very interesting reason behind this particular uh, property there are certain chances of a machine to fail like if we are having one machine there are certain uh, percentage of chances that uh, 
there could be hard disk crash there could be uh, machine failure there could be tons of hardware issues but when we are having a cluster that to say a thousand node cluster then the probability is thousand times more now on a thousand node cluster what will happen if one node goes down it shouldn't be like that all remaining 999 nodes become unavailable what hadoop does guys it recovers automatically from the failure failure of nodes are handled by your framework say at any point of time if a machine goes down no issues another machine will automatically take over without human intervention say in the night 3 am the machine goes down now your job should not be failed your cluster must be workable yes hadoop automatically will take care of all these things you don't need to rush to office in midnight reliability guys again very important principle because we are talking about the data your data must be stored reliably so guys hadoop stores data reliably even in case of machine failure failure of machine never cause the data loss at any point of time if say these two machine goes down no issues your data is still safe in the system there is something called replication which we will talk in uh, subsequent sessions due to which we are having our data reliably stored even if your disk crashed if your machine burnt out i'm talking about the extreme case then to your data is reliably stored you will never have any data loss issues now next characteristics high availability high availability refers to availability of data in the worst case like data is highly available even when your machine goes down so guys there will be no downtime for end user application due to data at any point of time if this user is reading the data from this particular node now while reading if either the node goes down or the link is down no issues the user will get the data from another node so that's the high availability scalability now we have two types of scalability one is vertical scalability second is horizontal scalability now vertical scalability means new hardware can be added to the node let me show you via some animation so we have this particular machine which is having say certain amount of ram say we are having 64 gigs ram and uh, we are having um, 16 cores of processor now requirement increases say for example currently user ha is having 100000 customers now it is touching 1 million customer earlier 100000 now 1 million so requirement has increased now correspondingly your hardware must be scaled so we have the type like just simply scale this particular machine okay we made the machine more stronger but guys there is certain upper cap you can add limited number of resources in a machine so we have got guys another way of scalability that is horizontal scalability that is hadoop way of scalability that is new node can be added on the fly let me demonstrate the same currently according to our old requirement we have six nodes in the cluster requirement increases add one more machine again requirement increases add one more machine again add one more machine again more requirement increases add three more machines simply guys as and when requirement is increasing we are simply keep adding more machines in the cluster we don't need to deploy all the nodes in well advance today my requirement is only for four nodes simply deploy go ahead with four nodes requirement increases add two more node requirement increases add 10 more nodes requirement increases at 50 more nodes keep adding more machines and keep scaling your system economic guys hadoop is highly economic we don't need to purchase costly license it's open source we don't need to purchase costly hardware it can be deployed on commodity hardware hence it's highly economic easy to use guys all the distributed computing challenges are handled automatically by the framework as being a user or being a client or being a developer being an admin i don't need to deal with the complex distributed computing challenges 
I just need to concentrate on business logic. Rest all the things are taken care by the framework. Another reason behind the success of Hadoop. Now, data locality. Again, guys, it is a feature that is out of the box uh, developed in Hadoop. What it says, it says move computation to data rather than moving data to computation. What it says, don't move your data. Why? Because guys, we are talking about the data that is in the range of petabytes. Is movement of petabytes of data feasible? Let me tell you guys what was happening in the traditional systems. In the traditional system, we had storage servers. We had data stored on the storage servers. Apart from that, we had application servers. To process the data, we need to move it to application servers. Now guys, this movement of data over the network is very costly. Especially when we talk about the big data. That's why guys, we have got another way. We are having servers where the data is already available. Now when user want to process the data, he will write say algorithm or code. Simply the algorithm will travel. Look at it. The algorithm will travel to all the nodes wherever data is available. Now this algorithm will process the data available on that node. In this manner guys, it saves the network bandwidth. So data locality, move computation, move algorithm to the data instead of moving the data. So guys, if I summarize this discussion, every day we generate 2.3 trillion GBs of data. That's really huge. Hadoop handles these huge volumes of data quite efficiently. Hadoop uses the power of distributed computing, which makes it lightning fast. Now guys, HDFS and YARN, these are the two main components of Hadoop and Hadoop is highly fault tolerant, reliable and available. So that's it for the introduction to Hadoop. I hope guys, you enjoyed the session. For more videos, please subscribe our YouTube channel.